Soviet tank destroyer ISU-152 has very large gun for its battle rating, which makes it different from other tanks. And not only in things related to firepower, Installing a big cannon provides certain advantages, but also requires some compromises. When playing this vehicle, you don't just choose the best shell type. There is a real choice to make between APHE and heat shells, and each option has its own advantages. There are two old good Soviet APHEs. Differences between them are not very significant. Both of them offer up to around 170mm of penetration at close range, which might not be enough in all cases. It's about average among similar battle rating tanks. But in return, they offer very huge post penetration damage. Soviets are already known for their APHE damage, but these shells are a new level of damage. They weigh almost 50 kilograms and have around 1 kilogram of explosives. Though it is not so easy to throw heavy things around. So it's not surprising that muzzle velocity is only 600 meters per second, which makes hitting distant targets slightly difficult. But if you choose APHE shells and opponent was penetrated, you can be pretty sure that now it's opponent's turn to make a choice which tank to respawn next. Another type is high explosive anti-tank. This shell offers almost guaranteed penetration. Its explosives create supersonic jet that can go through 250mm of armor no matter the distance. But this jet has much smaller post-penetration effect. It damages everything directly behind impact point, but almost no spalling goes sideways. On the other hand, 152mm heat shell has 5.9 kg of explosives, which can add substantial amount of additional damage when detonate on enemy tank's surface. But if you used high explosive shells before, you know how random such damage can be. It might detonate ammo rack or just make machine gun yellow. Additionally, heat round has slightly bigger muzzle velocity, 680 meters per second, but you must have a direct view on your target, because walls or bushes can detonate the shell too early. Basically, APHE maybe penetrates, but makes a lot of damage, and heat penetrates, makes a little damage, and maybe explosion adds some more. Which one is better? I don't have answer. Choosing shell type requires thinking and I prefer to stay away from that activity. But why not carry all types of shells and switch them depending on situation? Possible, though it requires the situation to stay the same for 21.3 seconds which is the smallest possible reload with aced crew. This reload also means that failing to destroy someone with a single shot will put you in a very difficult situation. Because playing this tank destroyer is a difficult task on its own. First of all it has no turret, so cannon's horizontal guidance is only 10 degrees in total. So it can be hard to aim at moving targets. But most importantly, in order to have a chance to aim that big cannon, you must have working engine and at least one track. And both of these things can be broken. So when tank destroyer loses mobility, it's no longer possible to take advantage of big cannon as well. Cannon's depression is also bad, only 3 degrees. Though it is not surprising for a Soviet vehicle. These limitations will force you to expose a whole vehicle before you can shoot. Which doesn't sound like a safe thing to do. So the only things that will keep you alive are the element of surprise and your armor. And you better focus on surprises, because armor 
won't save you often. Sights are 75 to 90 mm but have almost no angles. While plates are thick enough to provide some protection, most of the time being flanked means that you are in serious trouble, as opponents can easily shoot your engine, immobilizing the vehicle, and then have plenty of time to fire as many shots as necessary to finish the job. Frontally, gun is surrounded by weirdly shaped plates, their thickness reaches up to 100 mm. But usually opponents will target 90mm plates because there are no angles, so there is no risk of ricochet. While armor offers some protection against heavy tanks like Jumbo who are struggling with penetration, the rest of the vehicles will successfully damage you from any direction, including frontally. On the other hand, the vehicle sometimes can survive multiple hits, especially if you take less ammunition because there is quite a lot of space inside the vehicle and crew members on both sides are separated with a massive cannon breach. Long reload, limited guns depression, susceptible to flanking. All these things makes ISU-152 very bad frontline vehicle. It's just too easy for opponents to exploit its weaknesses. Better results can be achieved if you stay behind teammates and support them when required. They will draw all the attention, so you will be able to focus on your advantage, which is firepower. Of course, that makes you reliant on whoever you are following. The vehicle is not too fast. You will almost be able to reach a maximum speed of 38 kph. While acceleration is not fast enough to be a good flanker, that is enough to keep up with allies to support them. Turning is average and that wouldn't be a big deal, but there is so much depending on mobility that it becomes a problem. In case you went too far ahead or simply need to hide for a reload, 14 kph reverse will let you do that relatively quickly. Big heavy vehicle that is not moving a lot might look like an easy target for planes. In this case high caliber machine gun was very useful. Unlike the main gun, it rotates in all directions, which also makes it the only weapon available when vehicle is immobilized. Though it also can be used to compensate some downsides of your shells. For example, to destroy very light ground targets when APHE fuse won't activate, or to remove small bushes between you and target that might detonate heat shell too early. In arcade, you lose the element of surprise, which makes it significantly harder to stay alive. As in order to shoot you will have to peek around the corner and only then turn the whole vehicle towards enemies, which makes it significantly harder to stay alive, as in order to shoot you will have to peek around the corner and only then turn the whole vehicle towards enemies. If you was lucky to survive until this point, it will take some time to hide back as well. More time than it takes for any turreted vehicle that can turn the gun in required direction in advance. Since your armor is not reliable, being exposed for incoming shots longer than anyone else will put you in disadvantage. On a good note, aiming with slow shells will be slightly easier. But the most important positive change is engine power increase, because vehicle's maneuverability has big influence in its ability to use the gun. So summing all this up, vehicle in arcade plays a bit differently, but effectiveness stays about the same. Overall ISU-152 was difficult to play. It cannot do much on its own in places where a lot of action happens such as capturing points, which inconveniently is the main objective. Facing multiple opponents, just like when your shell misses or deals no damage, or when you are immobilized, usually ends up with your defeat. So vehicle is limited to following others or camping somewhere where it cannot be overrun. In both cases that means that you won't see a lot of action or you will see it but will not be part of it. So throughout the match you will feel useless most of the time. I would rate the ISU-152 5 broken engines out of 10.
Its gun is really powerful and you will feel the advantage it offers, but is it worth it if you rarely have a chance to use that advantage anyway? Are you interested in good alternative to this vehicle? Check the IS-2 in top left corner, or trust YouTube and see what it has to offer in bottom left.